Welcome to part four of your Game Maker Beginner to Pro tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk even more about variables. <laughs> so in the last video, we created our first variable. We called it hit points. We gave it the value of 100. And of course, uh, we went through some different code. I showed you how to draw out the hit points on the screen. We learned some different uh, code here for drawing and changing colors to fonts. We uh, made it to where when we click space, we're going to subtract a random number between 15 and 25 from our hit points. And of course, what would be the point of all of that if we couldn't actually die? And that's this piece of code right here. If hit points is less than or equal to zero, instance destroy. Now, in another video, we're going to talk more about if statements and what you can do with those. But I feel like a good thing to do right now is to slow down and talk a little bit more about variables. Last thing I'll say before we begin is I went ahead and made a sprite for an enemy, and then I created an object, object enemy, and I put that in the game. As you can see right here, this very unhappy man. And in future videos, we're going to give our player a gun, and we're going to shoot it to take out bad guys. So we'll set up a whole ammunition system and all of that. So let's talk about variables. And uh, oh boy. Let's do it. <laughs> so the variable that we created in the last video is the most common kind of variable in GML, and it's called an instance variable. So write that out there. Um, now, there are other kinds of variables. And fortunately, with GML, which is game maker language, variables are very forgiving, and they're very flexible. And you can do a lot with them. Remember, variables just contain something. And they can contain more than numbers. They can contain um, letters. They can contain sentences. They can also contain assets like sound effects or sprites or uh, you know specific IDs to certain objects. And we're going to go all through that in future videos. But there are different kinds of variables, though, too. And that's what I want to go over in this video, just so you have an understanding. So as I said, the first variable. Uh, type that we'll go over is the one we already made, which is called instance variables. And what that basically means is uh, when you create an, a variable like what you see on the screen, this kind of variable will only work within uh, an instance, or we'll just keep it simple and we'll call them objects for this video. I'll explain the difference between instances and objects in a future video. But uh, for, for example, hit points is only going to work within object player uh, after it's been created. And you can see it's working in all the different scripts, like space and draw and our step event. Um, you know, obviously, you've got to create the variable first, which we did in our create event. You always want to make sure you create a variable in an appropriate place. Create event is a great place to make them. You don't have to create them here, but you can because your create event is only going to run through one single time. Boom. It's just going to run when the object is created, and then it's done. Your space event, for example, right here, this will run all this code whenever you click space. But things like your step event and your draw event, these are running constantly. Let's say the game is 30 frames per second. Um, that means the script is running 30 times per second. Same with the draw event. So you don't want to create a variable here. Like if we just, this is our step event. Uh, if we said hit points equals 100 in here, and we ran the game, we would not be able to damage our hit points. So I'm clicking space, and notice it's not going lower. It's staying at 100. Because every frame, it's resetting it to 100. It's recreating this variable, uh, even though the space is supposed to damage our hit points. So if we delete that. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work the way we had it last time. So this is called an instance variable. And essentially what that means is this variable, hit points, is going to work all through object player. It will not work in another object like object enemy. Like if I created um, you know, key pressed event that's uh, when we click enter that we want to add hit points. Uh, and I said hit points plus equals... 15. Let's say we want to heal for 15 hit points. This is how we would do it. But I'm in the wrong object. I'm an object enemy. When I run the game by clicking F5, when I click enter, I'm going to get an error because I don't have a variable called hit points in object enemy. Now, I know some of this might seem like common sense, 
but it is good to know the differences here. We have our instance variables works in any script within our object once it's created. Next thing we have is a local variable. Um, a local variable would be created like this. You would say var, V-A-R, space, uh, and then good etiquette would, would uh, you would add an under slash and then the name of your variable. So like my var, I'll just call it that. Uh, and we'll give it the value of uh, 55. Okay, so you don't have to add this underscore here, but um, it is good etiquette. And actually, even how I named it isn't good game maker language etiquette. You should actually do it like this when you have spaces between the words. Um, you know, I come from another programming language sometimes, so, you know, you can name it anything you want. But if you want to be correct about it, it should look like that, you know, if it's two words. Uh, but anyway, a local variable, it, it's just good practice to always uh, put an underscore at the start of the variable. Uh, it's just a way to identify them very easily, other than it's always going to be yellow when it's a local variable. Now, a local variable can only be used within the script it was created in. So this variable, my var, can only be used within the create event. If I try to reference this in the space click event or step or draw, I, I'll get an error unless I recreate it uh, in space, uh, our, our, our key press space or, or the step event. I would have to remake it. So you can remake it and you can make it do anything you want, but you just always got to remember a local variable only will work within the script you make it in. That's useful because there are times you just need a variable when you're doing math and uh, you need to just throw it away and it's not going to be bogging your game down and it's not going to be stuck in the memory somewhere. So local variables have their place. They're very useful. Uh, and the last type of variable I want to go over is what we call a global variable. Uh, now, a global variable, you just create it like this. You say global, period, and we'll just name this one, uh, you know, high uh, current score. Okay, we'll put an underscore and we'll give it the value of zero. So a global variable, unlike an instance variable, can be used in other objects. So I created this in my object player, uh, global dot current score. So let's say this is the score of the game. Uh, now you know when I, I I can use this anywhere in my object player that I want in any script. But I can also use it in object enemy, and it's going to be working with the same exact variable, if that makes sense. So if I reference that variable in object enemy, it will contain the same value. I can mess with it, I can change it, I can do anything I want uh, with a global variable in any object or any script anywhere in the game. Once it's created, it's fair game. So these are the three types of variables you are going to be working a lot with. Instance variables can only work within that object in any script. Local variables can only be used within that script that you're working in. Global variable can be used anywhere in your whole project once it is created. The last thing I want to go over with variables is going to be in the next video. I think that's enough. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll keep going with part five. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment, leave a like. Uh, if you haven't, subscribe. And uh, I'm trying to pump these videos out as quickly as I can. So I just want to thank you once again for watching. And in the next video, we're going to keep going with variables, and I'm going to show you even more things that you can do with them. So I'll see you next time.